Right, someone asked the other day about the um, shield that I use to stop the trimmings going everywhere when I'm using the Giffen Grip on my wheel because the, the Giffen Grip raises everything by probably an inch and a half meaning that now all the trimmings go out over the splash pan. So this is what I made years ago, just literally off cuts from cardboard boxes. Um, I used a bunch of them so it can curve and they're stuck together with tape so it's flexible. Uh, the problem with this is that they're all rectangular which means that it's vertical and the wheel, actually the splash pan, kicks out a bit meaning that these rub on the given grip. So it's about time um, these got updated and the first thing I want to do is check my rough measurements for how I'm going to change them. So what I want to do is I want to make them, rather than being rectangular, they are going to become a trapezium, which means they're going to taper in. To top and bottom will be parallel, um, but they're going to taper in. So one edge will be longer than the other, then a bunch of them together and they'll go out like that. So I think they need to be about a centimetre different, possibly even a fraction more than that. So I'm going to go with a centimetre and a half. They are, just for reference, they are 19 tall and mine at the moment are 13, this is centimetres by the way, just in case you're still using Imperial. So if I take them down by a centimetre and a half. And then I'm going to stick them together and check the angle is, broadly speaking, where I want it. Okay, so, got three shapes, and I suspect those are going to be about right. Um, just gonna make a sellotape hinge for now, so I can test this on the wall. So I'll include a picture at this point of the wheel because I can't move the camera. Okay, so I think I want six sections like that. They're going to be something like 13 across the top and 10 across the bottom and then a few straight sections. So I'm going to make mine out of cardboard box that some of you can see my Hartley and Noble bats came in. What I want is one section with a square end. So uh, now I'll keep them at 13, 13 works quite well, so 13 and then 11 and a half. And then what you want to do is alternate 10 and 13, so 13 and 10 and that's because the difference is one and a half centimetres. So that is a centimetre and a half longer than that. That is then a centimetre and a half to bring it back and then a centimetre and a half to add the next step. And then you flip it, 13 and 10. And if you've done that correctly, this one should be 
centimeter and a half more than that. I do actually have a proper cutting mat, but it's buried and I can't be able to dig it out. The reason you can do it the way that I am currently doing it is that um, you'll just be able to flip them over. So I'll show you how this is going to assemble in a second. Right, so you now have two bits from the flap that are this shape. And what they are is 13 across the top, 10 across the bottom. You stick them together, you get something that angles out. Then you also have one that ends in a flat side. So it goes like that. And the reason that you want one to go with the flat end is that um, where it comes round the giffen, you want it to kind of go straight rather than continuing to turn. Again, I'll post pictures of it in place once it's done and that'll make sense. So, now I've done that, I will speed through, well, actually, I'll run through those numbers again because it'll probably make more sense if I just tell you what I did last time. So, 11.5 centimetres, 24.5 centimetres, 34.5 centimetres. Thirteen centimeters, twenty-three centimeters, thirty-six centimeters. So you mark those points, and then what you're doing is you're cutting diagonally, diagonally, diagonally. You could draw them on if you want. Uh, obviously, I'm not going to bother because why would you? This is just a waste of pen. As long as you remember to connect the right ones to each other. So, now you've done that, give yourself a bit of room, make sure they're all the same way up, and then what you want to do is stick them together, my swanky personalised fragile tape. So, lining up top and bottom, stick. Now you don't want to wrap around the top and bottom as such, because um, you need it to function as a hinge. So, if you stick round but tight on both sides and um, it uh, won't have any flex in it so what you need to do is make sure you allow for that when you stick so I, you want to stick the tape on it like that and then it will fold into the hinge but it will keep it together now have something that will angle out. Right, that's good. So what you then want to do is add one of the straight ones to each end. And to be honest, that would probably be enough. But I am going to cut down the one extra one that I have and add one to this end. Um, you would actually, it depends which way the wheel's turning, you want, if you've got um, uh, a 
normal wheel rotation, which in, for me is um, anti-clockwise. You want to add it to what will be the left-hand side of the splash pan because stuff gets thrown off the wheel head as it goes round. So the one that goes on the right-hand side, it's thrown up it, whereas the one that's on the left-hand side is thrown into it, if that makes sense. But um, the reason you can't say for certain it's that way is if you have the wheel turning the opposite direction, you need this one to be on the opposite side. So, probably don't need this one. I'll cut it off so I might as well attach it. Also, my cut edges are slightly neater than the factory ones, so it would be nice to have that hidden. that. Now what I'm going to do is cut off the extra scalpel for this. Just I'll do a better job. Right, so I've now trimmed all the tops and bottoms and they are quite neat. It doesn't need to be perfect, this is just obviously um, to catch clay trimmings. So. Yeah, you can make it as perfect as you want, but that should be adequate. Now, as I was saying, what you want to do is fold the hinge up before you stick this on. It might be easier to do it, but that's what I'll do. So I'll do it over the edge of the desk, um, stick it on half, fold that bit round, and then stick it on the other bit. And then, Make sure it goes in to the hinge. And so now you've got a working tape hinge. See that. So the, the other way you can do this, and actually uh, what I would have done if I were using paper tape, I wasn't sure how well it would work with, uh, sorry, if I was using plastic tape, is when you stick them together, sorry, leave a gap. And then what you do is once you've got tape on both sides with a gap, you can squish them together, the tape will stick to itself. And then you've got a hinge where the tape meets. I'll show you. So if you imagine tape stuck to one bit, what you then do is stick it with a gap and stick it with a gap and then make the tape meet like that and you've now got a hinge. So that way it works as well. Um, Actually, it seems to work quite well with paper tape, so maybe do that. Leave a gap between them when you stick them down. In which case, it's easy to wait, do it the way I just did it, where you stick one side, put it down on the surface and line the next one up. Easier to do it that way than it is to line the two of them up and stick the length of it. So, stick one edge, leave 5 mil gap maybe, and then the tape will make a hinge. But um, whichever way you do it, you want to make sure it can bend, so do not stick it, just stick tape on both sides or you'll have a, a straight line. So that's it, I'm going to rattle through the rest of this. Um, this video will be sped up as well, and then I'll show you it in place. So that's now a bunch of hinged sections. And I'm going to go away and trim the tops off them on my mat as well. And by the mat, I just mean those green cutting mats. It means you can 
if you flip it over so that that edge is pressed against it you can get a much better cut for the scalpel um, again neatness doesn't matter but it's nice to do it relatively well uh, and that's it and I'll show you a trimming video in a second right this is the new guide in place and it's doing a good job of clearing the given grip so it won't rub as it turns which was the main annoyance of the last one um, as you can see the kick out is quite dramatic so actually um, you could have got away with uh, less than a one and a half centimeter difference so in other words that was 13 at the top and 10 at the bottom and you could have done it 12 at the top and 10 at the bottom and then the angle out would be less but this works so a particularly wobbly piece to trim. These are just um, the little kind of anything from shot glass sized. So I've got like this little drippy slippy one. Uh, but I just threw a bunch of them at the end of the day because they make good glaze testers and little gifts that you can include on orders of mugs and things because they can fit inside the mugs and don't take up any extra room. So, if this was a proper piece I'd have um, padded out one side so it was centered a bit better but as it is you get a nice well you get a defined foot uh, sort of sit on just the outer bit of their logo and it's a very quick way of trimming them but yeah so that works the one thing I did quite like with the old one is you could lean on it and this one's not going to be quite so stable for that but um, it definitely, and actually, to be honest, I think the extra centimetre in height this has over the last one isn't needed either. So you could probably make it as short as um, the original was. Eight, uh, the original was 19, I think. I said at the start of the video. I think this is 20. You could probably get away with 18 and I might trim this down just a fraction because it is quite tall, you've got to kind of come over it but on the other hand it will catch everything Right, so I used it for a few minutes and decided that I would trim it down so hopefully you can see the middle one in front of me is now cut down to 18 um, I did two so it's 18 and then tapers up to 19, tapers up to 20. What that means is that you can see it's a bit lower there, but in, from the pictures you'll notice the gap on this side is greater than the gap on this side because of the way the wheel is shaped. So actually there's loads of room here to catch the trimmings. Um, and it doesn't matter about that, that, you know, that difference in height is fine. So you could do the whole thing at 18 if you wanted, or taper it down like I've just done. But the relevant thing is that it catches everything and this one's easier to come over the top of to trim. So it gets in the way slightly less. Um, and then all I'm doing at the moment is um, these are, this is actually a slightly oversized trinket bowl. The foot was cut with my foot trimming tool um, and then this is how I um, finish the foot ring so I'll hollow out the center uh, burnish it with define that transition with uh, a shaping tool put a swirl on the bottom and then round the bit that I just trimmed 
and that looks like that. So it's a very quick way of finishing them. Uh, if you've used the foot trimming tool, it gives you a defined foot ring and a shape to the bottom, uh, but only adds kind of 60 seconds or so work. So I think it's worth the extra little bit of time for that finesse, but you don't necessarily have to do that.